Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're talking about the Sig Sauer P6, the gun that invented Sig Sauer. In the 1970s, in the wake of the Olympic terrorist attack in 1972, the German police decided they needed to standardize on fewer guns and one caliber, preferably 9mm, the caliber that their military already used and was specified by NATO. Um, up to that point, they'd been using a motley assortment of 9mm, 32s, and by some accounts, even some Smith & Wesson 38s. Um, so they held trials, and these were extensive and exhaustive. And in the end, three guns passed muster. The Walther P5, the Sig P6, and the Heckler & Koch P7. The P7 has attained cult status. The P5 has sank into the depths of history with barely a ripple. The P6 did something no other gun did. It created one of the giants of the modern handgun industry, Sig Sauer. The Sig P6 turned out to be one of the most popular choices resulting from the police trials. And um, it was very by far the best selling of the three guns to the different departments, not least because it was cheapest and it met the specification and passed the tests. But SIG hadn't anticipated the demand and couldn't meet it. So they contracted J.P. Sauer and Sons as a subcontractor to produce pistols. So the initial guns were SIG P6s, um, and then SIG Sauer P6s, and then relatively short order, SIG bought out J.P. Sauer and Son and became SIG Sauer, which they have been ever since. So let's have a look at this gun on the tabletop. The SIG P6 is a relatively compact pistol because it was designed to be used both on and off duty by the Polizei. So it's almost identical in dimensions to the Glock 19. Controls are pretty simple. There's a slide release, hammer drop, and the magazine release. I'm told early examples had a uh, heel release, but they switched to this pretty quickly. Other than that, the trigger is the only real control unless you count the hammer. Let's unload and show clear. The eight round magazine drops out very nicely. Chamber is empty and dropping the hammer. So disassembly is unsurprisingly just like a SIG. Walk the slide back, rotate the lever 90 degrees, and slide the slide forward off the full length rails. Very nice feature and contribute to accuracy. The um, hollow steel guide rod in the recoil system and a double wound spring, which is not captured, but it doesn't tend to go flying, which I very much appreciate. Barrel comes out in the typical fashion. It uses the top of the chamber as the locking lug. I'm told SIG originally licensed this from a French design, pre-war design, in 32 French long. Reassembly is very simple and pretty hard to get wrong, which is really nice in a service pistol. Barrel goes in just like it came out. Recoil assembly goes in, locks in place against the barrel, slide it back onto the rails, lock the side back, rotate the lever, and there you go. Ready to go again. Now, it's a double action, single action, so the first trigger pull is double action, after which the hammer is cocked by the slide, giving you a pretty nice single action trigger pull. There is not the shortest, it's not the shortest reset in the world, and there's a little bit of take up, but the brake is crisp and double action is heavy, but it's very smooth and linear. So it's really surprisingly easy to get used to. Really, the only area this falls short is in magazine capacity. It is heavier than modern polymer frame guns, but it's not obnoxiously heavy. I've never found it a problem to carry. Since these were designed to be used both on and off duty, they came with both a duty belt holster and a quite versatile shoulder holster, which could also double as a um, 
high and tight belt holster. Ergonomics are excellent. The um, controls are all right where they're very easy to reach, but I've never hit them by accident. The texturing of the checkering on the grips is good, but not, not aggressive, but it is good and continues on to the back strap. The front strap has vertical serrations. And that was actually quite good for a service pistol of its era. Sights are decent. The, um, the front sight is big and blocky, but it's not too big. It lets you get a look good bar of light on each side when properly aligned. The system was a little unusual in that there were white lines, a vertical white line here and a vertical white line for the front sight. I painted them orange because I like that better. And um, as far as shooting it goes, it's a surprisingly soft shooting gun, and I've run everything from plus P plus hollow points to light target loads through it, and it just sucks everything up. The only time I ever had a problem was with the Muram Russian primer, which I've managed to fail, managed to fail <laughs> in every gun I've tried them in, so I don't think it's the guns. Um, one ergonomic thing that I like very well is that when my finger is in the safe position on the frame, I can transition directly to the trigger and there's nothing in the way, which is far more unusual than it should be. Uh, in character with its late 70s, early 80s origin, it has the basically useless hooked front trigger guard. And uh, the trigger guard isn't very tall, but it's long. And I have had no difficulty even wearing gloves accessing the trigger and operating it properly. So... All in all, it's a, just a very nicely made, solid service pistol. And, um, you know, aside from capacity, there's really nothing to complain about here. The P6 enjoyed a long and successful service life and was a solid, durable, reliable pistol. But time marches on and polymer frames, high capacity, all of these things became the norm. Um, a civilian version of this gun, the P225, was introduced about as fast as manufacturing capacity could be spared, and they became quite popular and were followed almost immediately by the P226 with a high capacity magazine. And um, I have this gun because I have I have a sentimental attachment to the P6, and we won't go into that. Um, but my friend owned one that I envied, and Linda knew this, and then he sold it without consulting me or offering it to me, and he felt very badly about that. And my beloved Linda tracked one down on Gun Broker and bought it for me as a COVID pick-me-up in, uh, <laughs> in uh, the first my first birthday of the epidemic. Whoever thought we'd be saying that. Um, and um, it's, what can I say? It's extremely reliable. It's easy to shoot well. Um, it does everything you would want it to do except hold a lot of bullets. And uh, a number of them have entered the country uh, from police surplus sales. You can find them. They're pretty well priced at around $400, $450 when you come across them. Should you buy a P6? <sighs> the P226 being virtually of identical dimensions and holding significantly more shots, I can't think of a single reason why you should. Unless you just want a good, solid, reliable gun for home defense, shooting at the range, whatever you like. But the eight-round magazine is a serious limitation for a lot of people. Doesn't bother me. I'm a dinosaur, and I can reload fast. But I'm not everyone. Anyway, it's a fantastic gun. I'm delighted to own it, and I shoot it frequently because I like it. <laughs> it's not pretty, but pretty is as pretty does, and it does pretty damn well. So, hope you all are well, stay safe and take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.